Hi, I'm Derek Dennis with ABC News here at the Barrow Elites Alternative Investments Conference. And I'm joined by Bennett Moore, who is a blockchain accountant, if you will, an expert in that field. Uh, and and uh, for, right off the bat, I'm going to ask you, what is blockchain? A lot of people are talking about it, and a lot of people are interested in it. What is it? Yeah, so maybe just for a little bit more color in terms of who I am. So Bennett Moore, yeah. part of our national blockchain digital assets practice at RSM US. So yeah. we're the fifth largest accounting consulting firm globally. And our center of excellence, really what we're focused on, is assisting our existing engagement teams that are serving blockchain digital asset clients with the ability to perform our audit, tax, and consulting-oriented work. So coming forward to your question here, in terms of what is blockchain, I'm going to keep things very simple, concise. You know, I think we could spend probably hours talking about sure. the different nuances of what exactly a blockchain is. But at its very core, you can think of blockchain as a shared ledger that many different people throughout the world and different entities are all maintaining a copy of and consistently agreeing with each other as to the state of that ledger. So instead of relying on one single party to maintain a ledger and ensure that that party follows the rules and all participants of that follow the rules, you rather rely on everyone to maintain a copy of that ledger and everyone has a set of those rules and enforces those rules against everybody else. So it's a more distributed way of kind of reaching an agreement that someone is following the rules rather than relying on a central counterparty to ensure that everyone's following the rules. It's like a form of crowdsourcing in a, in a yeah. way, Yeah, right? in a way, as we think about the internet today, I mean, if you go back to the earlier days, and you know, really what blockchain solved was this concept of the double spend issue. So if you think back to like the days of like LimeWire um, or a few of these other technologies that were you know, in the early MP3 days where someone was able to actually download an MP3 file and then put that on the internet and everybody else around the world was able to download it for free, even though that one person paid for it. The yeah. problem with that concept is that that's double spending. One person buys it, everybody else can download it. Blockchain solved that issue by ensuring that if I want to send funds from myself to yourself, that everybody around us knows that I no longer have the funds when I've sent it and you've received the funds when yeah. you sent it. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of risk though, because it sounds like the more eyeballs or hands in a pot, so to speak, uh, there's increased risk involved, right? Yeah, so I mean, when we think about the risks of blockchain digital assets, there's a lot of different areas and subsets we could kind of look into to better understand that. But I think one of the more you know newer or maybe reintroduced concepts of security that exists as blockchain is this concept of custody. You know, digital assets, a lot of people talk about this concept of being your own bank, custodying your own funds. You know, we see many different options in terms of the custody landscape for digital assets out there. And I think what's the most important thing about risk with that is really understanding the different associated risks with different custody models, right? So when we think about exchanges, right? You know, I think many of us are aware of what's been going on around FTX and what we've seen around how poor controls, the fact that no controls really existed over there at FTX, yeah. and no one had any visibility into that. So when you think about exchanges as a form of custody for an individual holding crypto or a fund or other institutions, you are relying on their control architecture surrounding how they manage the keys, sure. which are basically like your password to the crypto. And you know, if there aren't things like SOC reports or insurance or other independent third parties, such as regulators or accounting firms, coming in there to assess that architecture, there could be significant risk that you're unaware of. Right. And I won't go into more of the nuanced details of how you know, custody security works. But you've kind of got the exchange level, you've got what you might refer to as the qualified custodian or full service custodian level, usually regulated trust companies or national banks. And then you've also got the self custody landscape where individuals such as yourself or myself might choose to custody crypto ourselves. And that can also involve a variety of security considerations around managing those private keys and managing the backups to those keys in a secure way. I mean, without getting into the, the logistics of security, Talk about how important it is to safeguard this data. I mean, it is exceptionally important because when we think about blockchain and the way this technology works, it is an immutable ledger. I know immutable sounds a little bit like a buzzword. So to break it down more simply, it just means the inability to be altered. It means that when you actually place a transaction or do an action on a blockchain and it is recorded, there's no way to reverse that. All you can do is continue to append new information. So if my wallet, my keys that custody of the crypto are compromised, and somebody moves those crypto out of the wallet that I control or did control uh, to another address that I don't control, there's no way to reverse that transaction. There's right. no way to take it back. So when we think about blockchain, 
there is a benefit to that immutability and that it provides a really good audit log so that we understand exactly who did any given action. But it also has a cost in that if you make a mistake from a security standpoint, such as being hacked, there is no way to reverse that. And so that is a really important risk consideration when we think about the blockchain digital asset space that is present for anybody that is handling digital assets. So is blockchain accounting impacted by a tough financial market, which is what we're seeing now around the world? Uh, I mean, I think it depends on, on which areas you talk about in accounting. I mean, if you're thinking about you know, individual small accounting businesses that are serving maybe the innovative startups in this space, sure. you might see some significant impacts due to a lack of funding in this, call it bear market that we're in currently, right? right? But as it relates to a firm like ourselves, you know, uh, you know, number five in terms of large public accounting consulting firms, really it's actually been a, a relative boom to us because we've always had a very strong risk management approach to the space. We do a lot of due diligence and vetting in terms of any of the clients we serve. And you know, given everything that's been going on surrounding FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi, and a number of other companies uh, in the last two years that have kind of caused some of this bear market activity, you know, we have been very careful to ensure that we're engaging with the right parties. And, you know, that type of activity has spurred a lot of companies who are trying to capture institutional attention, institutional interest in being more compliant, getting things like SOC reports, getting appropriately uh, audited financial statements. And so really we are sitting here as the party that can assist companies in, you know, entering that more institutional era of their kind of journey as a business growing. And so from that perspective, you know, we've continued to help move companies forward and be a true trusted advisor to our clients that are looking to, you know, continue to build in this space. You know, while we've seen many companies die down and maybe we've even seen headcount slashed, we really see this as a movement more toward the, the building side while everything kind of quiets down. And, you know, we're still out there committed to this space in an appropriately risk managed manner. And I think our clients understand that and respect that. Do you think in the age of Sam Bankman Fried, you know, the FTX co-founder who, uh, you know, you know, got caught essentially, uh, you know, mismanaging funds, do you think there's more of an emphasis now on making sure there's security and and safeguards in place so that kind of situation doesn't happen again? Absolutely, I think that's what a lot of these companies are working toward, and that is the kind of things that we are have place a very heavy heavy emphasis on in our own due diligence and the work that we're performing and assisting companies with. Right, you know, with FTX, there were clearly no controls, no oversight surrounding anything related to custody or trade processing. I mean, a whole bunch of different areas. And really, what we see with the work we're performing with a lot of other large companies in the blockchain digital asset space is that these companies are taking that very much to heart, and there are plenty of good actors that have been out there very focused on doing this the right way from the get-go. And so FTX can give some you know, well-known parties and entities within the crypto space here in the US a bad rap when they've actually been working very hard to ensure that they have all the appropriate controls, compliance considerations, and engage with the regulators to the extent they can. All right, anything else you wanna add or say? No, I think that's been great. I really appreciate you taking the time here to put me on and I'd uh, be happy to join any other time. So thank you very much for your time. You too, Bennett Moore. Uh, blockchain uh, accounting expert. Thanks for joining me here. Uh, I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News. Beryl Elite's Alternative Investments Conference continues. Stay with us.